I've got one major story for you guys. One major story, and that is uh, we're going to be talking a lot about COINTELPRO and J. Edgar Hoover and um, what he did to MLK and the Black Panthers. Um, now, one of the earliest shows that I did, earliest virtual shows that I did, was uh, going through the history of the Black Panther Party, but I really didn't talk a whole lot about J. Edgar Hoover. I really didn't talk a whole lot about uh, COINTELPRO and uh, how um, how COINTELPRO uh, was released to the public, how people found out what uh, that was, uh, because in that show, I did want to keep it really focused on what, what was going on with the Panther Party uh, and how they were being attacked and why they were being attacked. That's also a very important uh, aspect of it is, is how and why they were being attacked. So... Um, you know, uh, COINTEL Pro, it, it stands for Counterintelligence Program, uh, and uh, civilians were the ones that stole it, and, and that's how it got released. Uh, it was um, it was stolen, um, and uh, the planning of this happened in the suburbs in Philadelphia, in in a living room with the with a mother of three. So you had three people that were kind of uh, the the central focal points of of stealing uh, COINTELPRO. So you had Keith Forsyth, who was an anti-war activist, uh, and he basically said that the decision to, to, to uh, go in and look for these documents, and they weren't looking for COINTELPRO specifically, uh, they had just known that uh, the FBI had infiltrated the anti-war movement. And they had, they had known that, you know, the FBI was uh, keeping tabs on... Um, uh, larger civil rights movements as well. Because this is post-Kennedy, post-Lyndon B. Johnson, and we're heading into the Nixon era. Uh, and Nixon is, Richard Nixon is, um, is basically like uh, uh, paranoia as a human being, right? Like he is the, he is the human embodiment of paranoia. That's who he was. Um, not as much as J. Edgar Hoover. I think J. Edgar Hoover is a little bit more of the human embodiment of paranoia than Richard Nixon. But he, but Richard Nixon still is up there. Like these are people that are basically human embodiments of paranoia, uh, and they act on that, and they make their decisions on that, and they ran a country based on that, and they legislated based on that. And this is the sort of stuff that happens when you do legislate with fear and paranoia and trying to pit your neighbors against each other, right? So all this stuff was happening, and uh, by by 1971, uh, you know Keith Forsyth basically said we had to do more than uh, just march. We had to do more than just uh, protest with signs. We had to do more than just civil disobedience. We had to get the word out there that um, that these people were engaging in illegal activities because they knew that their phones were tapped, so they were talking in code, right? They would they would say like, "Oh, are you going to the party?" To, to be like, oh, are you going to the protest? Are you going to the march, right? Because they can't come out and say march. They can't come out and say protest. Uh, that's, how, that's how bad it was. And again, these intelligence communities, um, really the way they operate is, um, is unconstitutional uh, because, because the way they operate is a suppression of, 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 of speech and expression. You can't express uh, and especially at that time, you couldn't express that you had uh, a particular belief system, right? If you believed in anything mildly socialist, they would label you a communist and a threat to America, uh, as they did with uh, with the Rosenbergs, and they uh, and they uh, killed the Rosenbergs. They they executed the Rosenbergs. They were political prisoners. And it was a political execution because they believed that these two folks, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, were communists that were selling American secrets, which was not true, and they killed them anyway, because that's what happens when you legislate and lead with fear and paranoia. So carrying on from that, you get to J. Edgar Hoover, who was this massive paranoid person, and he was looking for the communist threat, and he was looking for someone called the Black, something called the Black Messiah, which we'll get to in a second. But they were tapping into these movements so they had to do something. They had to they had to push back against this thing they, because their speech was being suppressed. Their their ideologies were being suppressed. Things that they knew would help the people would be uh, they would be suppressed. So 
so that's what you know Keith Forsyth was kind of talking about was was we had to do something more. Then you had Bonnie Rains, who was a mother of three, another anti-war activist. Uh, and she was involved in um, a part of the Catholic left is what they called themselves. Uh, the Catholic left, uh, they were they were against the Vietnam War. Uh, th this is, I think this is either around the time of the Pentagon Papers or, or after the Pentagon Papers had been released. 71. Um, I'm not exactly sure about the timeline. And... Uh, so she, they, they burned draft records as protests, and they wanted to take it a step further. So they organized together with her husband, John Rain. Uh, and he was talking about how the FBI had infiltrated the anti-war movements. Uh, so they, they also now, thanks to COINTELPRO, know things like uh, the FBI was sending letters to MLK telling him that he had to kill himself because, uh, because of his infidelity that he had no option but to commit suicide because of his infidelity, which is just a signal that uh, the FBI did absolutely want him killed. They, they wanted him uh, silenced and shut down, and clearly these uh, intimidation things weren't uh, working, so, you know, there, there, was that, there was an assassination. So before they went and did this, they called their grand, they called, uh, you know, John and Bonnie Rains, they called their, their parents and they said, hey, look, we're about to go do something um, that's potentially dangerous, that might potentially get us in, put in prison for life or worse. Uh, and we want our kids to be taken care of. So here's the plan for our kids. So they made sure that their kids would be in the custody of their grandparents. They made sure that they would have uh, access to, to, to finances and things of that sort. And they took care of their kids. And on March 8th, 1971, they broke into um, the uh, FBI headquarters near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And they went in uh, during a big anti-war protest. Uh, but also at the same time, there was a big fight. It was it was a big Muhammad Ali fight that was going to be televised, and they were basically like, "We needed as many distractions as we could possibly get, so that they're not really focused on us being inside, posing as a college student, you know, trying to get a tour of the facility and going into areas where they might keep documents and records of what they've been doing." And they found COINTELPRO, and they found all this information about how um, how they were they were essentially infiltrating all of these movements, including uh, MLK's movements, including the Black Panther Party, um, inclu and including the anti-war movement. So what do they do? They got all these documents. And, you know, the narrative that is always kind of sold to all of us in these sort of instances, oh, well, this is a threat to national security. Well, we had to do something because these anti-war protesters are a threat to national security. They're going to sell all of this information to our enemies. Well, that's not true. They did what pretty much every fucking whistleblower does. Anytime that uh, people find this sort of information, they don't go sell these secrets to, you know, opposing nations and things of that sort. They don't, uh, you know, to, to, to uh, people that might be a threat to national security or what have you. Uh, that's a false narrative that's sold. They gave it to journalists. Uh, they made photocopies of everything and they sent it out to various different journalists. And they also sent it out to uh, a couple of senators, right? Uh, they sent it out to um, McGovern. McGovern was one of the senators. And, you know, this is after he had lost to, to Richard Nixon. So who knows? what state of mind he was in. But he sent it to, to some of these senators. And uh, they, sent, they just sent that information back to the FBI. They were like, hey, we got this in the mail. You, you know, I think, I think you're missing some records. Which just goes to show like, how closely uh, senators and co Congress people are, are really connected to the FBI. And uh, but the journalist, you know, uh, there were obviously the same thing when when the Pentagon Papers were released and same thing when Edward Snowden 
release the information about the NSA, there were certain journalists that were like, we're not, we can't really do much about this. We can't cover this story. No one's going to let us cover this story. Uh, but there was a journalist that did because she found information in there that was uh, very, very perturbing, very, very disturbing to, to find out uh, where they literally used the phrase, one of the points of the FBI under COINTELPRO is to enhance the paranoia in America uh, and to make sure that people know that there's an FBI agent behind every mailbox, basically saying, you know, we're watching you nonstop and to create an environment where you feel like there's a panopticon, right? A panopticon, the concept of panopticon is this big tower uh, with something that, you know, seems like it's watching you and you never know whether there's a guard or, or a person behind the camera or not, right? And, and that's, again, something that Edward Snowden basically discovered is that, you know, computer cameras and phone cameras uh, are, are being tapped into. Uh, now you can do that with Ring using Amazon. They can they 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 sell that information to local law enforcement. They basically have surveillance to any and every um, neighborhood that they want to by just selling a consumer product, right? Again, uh, the idea is you don't know whether they're watching or not. You don't know whether they're listening or not. So you better just act as if they were. And it's a way to suppress people. It's a way to censor people. It's a way to create chaos. It's a way to create a, a paranoid state where everybody could be uh, the enemy. And and it's in, in, in an environment like that, it's very, very difficult to create a sense of community when you're just on guard all the time. And as a mental health thing, not having a, a sense of privacy, not having time for yourself um, to... Um, to reflect, uh, to, you know, just be who you want to be without the judgment of anybody else to just kind of, just kind of relax is, is very negative for your mental health and your development as a person. Uh, and that's sort of what the FBI is promoting. Now, the other part of it that was really, that was revealed in, in COINTELPRO is the blanket surveillance of black communities. And the goal was to have at least six informants per FBI agent who would report back to um, to the FBI agents about weekly gatherings uh, and the goings on in black communities because they wanted to know, well, what are the black people up to? Well, we I mean, these these people don't look like us. They don't act like us. They're asking for equality. You don't see white people doing this. Why would they ask for equality? Well, why people aren't asking for equality? So it's like shit like that. And they were like, well, we need to keep tabs on, on the black community and find out what, what's going on. Why are they gathering in churches? Why are they gathering in community centers? What is this an infiltration? But this is it. But this is that sort of paranoid thinking, right? Where, you know, you walk past the street and you see a group of people hanging out or some kids in a playground and they're laughing and you go, are you laughing at me? Are you talking about me? Is that what, is this all about me? It, 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 it like this hyper sense of paranoia uh, and this this sense of hyper individualism really creates a narcissistic uh, mindset. And that sort of stuff is very negative because that level of narcissism, I mean, we had a narcissist for a president for four years and you can kind of see how he operated things. Uh, not it wasn't great. so and and I've known narcissists um, and and how negative, they are not just to themselves because they have a warped sense of self, but they have also have a warped sense of the world outside of them. Um, and they believe that the world outside of them is, is not good enough for them. And again, this sort of stuff comes from paranoid thinking. And again, this paranoid thinking is what was being uh, amplified by the FBI at the time. And it kind of made paranoia the American way. That's, that's really what it did. Uh, and, and it may, you know, because paranoia leads to hyper individualism and hyper individualism is what's preached in America time and time again. Uh, I want to play this clip. This is one of the senators that uh, talked about what was going on with COINTELPRO. Okay, there we go. Share audio. This is going to be a short clip. And hopefully it'll play 
without any sort of major freezes or there we go okay so it seems like it's working so let's play this is this is a very old democracy now clip uh this is before they went all russiagate and msnbc on things uh, when they were doing like really good, interesting journalism and not that they do terrible journalism. They're still better than a lot of corporate media, but they did go down the Russiagate train um, and they did, you know, they, they, they stopped talking about certain topics. Um, it, it, you know, it, it, it's disappointing to see what's happened to democracy now, but this is, this is something that they played on democracy now from 2014, as you can see here. Uh, so I'm going to play this clip. It's a short clip. We have seen today the dark side of those activities where many Americans who were not even suspected of crime uh, were not only spied upon, uh, but they were harassed, they were discredited, and at times endangered. That so, so there you have a, a, a congressman talking about how uh, this is dangerous, right? Like what the FBI is doing is is incredibly dangerous. Um, and this guy's basically saying we should like we're targeting people that haven't even committed a crime yet. I mean, this is minority. This, this, have you, if you've ever seen the movie Minority Report, uh, this is this is basically like a low tech version of Minority Report, and it does. This is not creating an environment where people can live their best lives and thrive as a society. It's creating a, a culture of fear uh, and mistrust. So, you know, again, this is a senator calling that out. So. Really, it, 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 to me, it there there is no excuse for what they did, um, and we'll get into what prompted someone like uh, J. Edgar Hoover. Uh, oh boy, I hate I hate some of these websites that just start playing randomly because that's exactly what just happened. There was one of the news sites because I I I have it on a different screen. It just started playing in my ear. <laughs> So sorry about that. I feel like I'm having more tech issues today than I need to. Remember how I said last night that this week isn't going to be terrible. It's just going to be annoying. Like I feel like I'm 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 I predicted the future and I'm I'm living in it. Anyway, um but you know there there were senators that were calling out uh what was going on with uh the FBI and saying like you're creating a culture of fear that people don't want to live in uh and that's not helping us prosper as a nation. So I'm going to look at some comments here. Um, Holly's saying COINTELPRO still exists, uh, infiltrating mosques, BLM, uh, and uh, uh, much of those activities have been legalized. ARM says much of those ac activities are legalized. Yeah, we saw that with the Blue Leaks. The Blue Leaks basically showed how um, law enforcement agencies partner up with uh, white supremacist organizations, and they use old gang laws. They're using these old, outdated gang laws um, to spy on on uh, Black Lives Matter protests and marches and uh, demonstrations and so on and so forth. And we also saw over the uh, over the last summer where unmarked white vans were just picking up people they thought were Black Lives Matter protesters, right? And some of these people were just walking home in a hoodie. They have a black hoodie and they were just walking home and this unmarked car pulls up and they grab them and they're, and they're U.S. federal marshals. They're federal marshals that were doing that. Uh, and they were partnering with, uh, with the, uh, one of the versions of, uh, I think, uh, ICE or border security or something along those lines. But, you know, we saw that happening. These people weren't committing a crime. They were exercising their right to uh to protest they were exercising their right to march and they get arrested uh aram is asking so assassination is unconstitutional i would say so yeah especially if it's politically motivated uh or ideologically motivated uh as in the case of um you know 
pretty much, I mean, we're going to talk about MLK and, and Fred Hampton, but almost a lot, uh, all of the, the people that have been assassinated in some way, shape or form, it's, it's a form of censorship uh, because you are, you are, you are killing somebody in, in order to stop them from spreading an idea. So it's ideological assassinations. You also have uh, the form of censorship, uh, political censorship, where people get uh, put into prison. They get sent to prison, you know, because uh, they believe in a certain ideology that is considered dangerous. A lot of Black Panthers are still in prison and they don't get paroled and they uh, don't get early releases and so on and so forth because they won't uh, disavow their Black Panther ideologies, which makes them political prisoners. So we have political prisoners in America, regardless of what uh, a lot of uh, politicians um, politicians claim in America. It says, Malcolm at the deathbed a confession of the operation. He wanted the information released after he died because he didn't want retaliation. I, I am... Um, I, I, I am not as informed on Malcolm X as I should be. That is uh, on the list of one of many things that I need to be informed about. So, and I do have some, uh, you know, documentaries to watch and some things to read uh, that uh, that that I that I that I want to learn more about Malcolm X. Uh, the more I see it, um, unknown until the statute of limitations passed. Uh, yeah. So metadata is one of the ways that they surveil us now. Um, yeah, the, yeah, you brought up the Portland thing, Holly, the unmarked cars grabbing people that happened in Pittsburgh too. Uh, and I think they were trying to do stuff in Chicago and DC and some of these larger cities where some of the larger protests were happening, where they were just trying to grab people, try to get information to try to figure out whether there was an organized leadership. Uh, and, and again, uh, you know, uh, the the CIA and the FBI consider Black Lives Matter to be associated with uh, with the Russians because it, uh, it it it's it's an agitator, right? And not just that, but it quote unquote. And this is this is from a CIA analyst that uh, Aaron Mate interviewed a number of years ago, probably three or four years ago, and he said, "Well, you know, we have to look into that." because uh, Russia likes it when we sow a little divide in our country. So Russia is backing up Black Lives Matter, and we have to see if Black Lives Matter uh, is, is, a, is a, a, a Russian uh, plant. This movement is a Russian plant to sow divide in America, as if America has never had any problems with race before, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, Sarah, Sarah also brought up the, the bands picking up uh, protesters as well. Uh, so yeah, so it, 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 we're, we're still seeing the effects of COINTELPRO in, in, in some, uh, some way, shape or form. Uh, Shane's pointing out the death pilot confession Holly mentioned just happened a couple weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I probably missed it, but thank you for pointing that out because I, I that is something that I'm going to have to look into. Uh, like I said, I am not as as informed about Malcolm X as I as I really should be. Uh, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube. They often uncensor people, uh, un unsubscribe people, and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual 
comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video.